Of all the content RLCraft has to offer, there is one part of the mod pack that people tend to stay away from. With maxed out weapon, armor, and baubles, players can generally conquer pretty much anything that gets thrown their way. However, this isn't really the case with the Lost Cities, and RLCraft's most recent update actually made it even harder. Despite this, there are actually still ways to survive in the Lost Cities, and even get the Dragon Ring without getting targeted by a single enemy. But before we get into that, let's start by talking about some of the debuffs. The main things you'll be wanting to look out for are Call of the Hive, Viral, Corrosion, and Fear. Call of the Hive is basically the parasite sickness. It can be contracted by getting hit by mobs, standing next to mobs with tier 2 or higher, or standing inside of a mob's remains while it explodes. Any normal mob with this debuff will start assimilating, which means they'll start to evolve into their parasite variant and begin spreading it to everything else. If the player gets it, however, all it really does is make so you generate a parasite when you die. Just as a side note, there is currently a bug where you can infect the overworld, and even though the wiki says that players can't spread Call of the Hive, I tend to still not take it into the overworld. Viral makes so you take increased damage from all sources depending on the level of viral that you have. Each level of viral causes mobs to do 50% more damage per hit, so at viral 10, you'll be taking 6 times as much damage as you would normally. It used to only stack to 5, but obviously, I guess we need this place to be more difficult. To avoid this debuff, you should be looking out for heavy carriers, flying carriers, the assimilated ender dragon, virulent parasites, which are just the green variants of normal parasites, and bombs from beckons. Corrosion is basically just a debuff that you get from vigilante projectiles, and it slowly breaks your armor. The last debuff, which is pretty much the most notorious, is fear. The fear effect used to make so you couldn't use any right-click actions for the entirety of the time that you're in the Lost Cities, but now the highest level of fear makes the right-click actions only work around 50% of the time. Fear is obtained whenever any mob is aggroing on you, and the potency is completely dependent on the tier of the mob. For example, if an assimilated pig aggros me, I'll only get fear 1, but if an overlord aggros me, I'll get fear 4. And though it's not really considered a buff or a debuff, the adaptation system is also probably something I should cover. Parasites that can adapt will slowly go completely immune to whatever damage source you're hitting them with. So it's really important to have a strong weapon to deal with this before they can adapt, because once they have adapted to a damage source, there's no way of reversing it. Alternatively, you can bring in another weapon, because parasites can only adapt to specific weapons. If you want to prevent adaptation, setting them on fire will significantly reduce how fast they adapt, and fire also does 4 times damage to them. You'll know if a parasite has fully adapted if it starts flashing purple every time you hit it. Some parasites also have weak points, so if you want to do a lot of damage fast, I would recommend looking into that. That should hopefully clear up what all those weird debuffs do when you enter the cities. So now I'll actually cover some of the methods to loot and explore the dimension. The very first thing you'll want to do is get the materials to create a portal, and also everything you need to create a safe waystone within the dimension. To create the portal, you'll need two Sincinicite lanterns, six mob heads, and a bed. And for the safe waystone, bring at least two stacks of obsidian, your waystone, an invisibility potion, a potion of flight, lots of carpet, and a warp scroll or at least three levels to get out. It should be noted though that if you die in the Lost Cities before your safe waystone is created and you set your spawn at it, you will spawn randomly in the Lost Cities. And if that happens, the only way to get out is to build a warp scroll from the chest that you loot, though with all these new mobs that's almost impossible now. So optionally for the added safety, you can bring in an additional waystone and the materials to create a portal out. Once you have all the items you need, make sure you drink your invisibility potion, potion of flight, and take off all your armor before entering. As soon as you get in, start pillaring into the sky with as many blocks as you can, and then create a safe obsidian box and place your waystone in the center. Put carpets down on every surface, including the roof, and you should pretty much be safe now every time you enter or respawn. Once your safe spawn point is all set up, you can start finally getting race rings. Race rings are scattered in chests all throughout the cities, all of which are affected by your luck stat. The higher your luck is, the more likely you are to spawn a ring in the chest you loot, but even with high luck it still is pretty rare. 
Rings will spawn in different locations throughout the cities, so you'll want to be aware of where the ring you're going for will spawn. Fairy rings will spawn on the higher floor of buildings, while dwarf rings will spawn on the bottom floors and basements. Elf rings spawn on the middle floors, and goblin rings spawn in the subway tunnels beneath the city. Titan rings and phalus rings are the most common, spawning on pretty much any floor in the main buildings. And despite spawning pretty much anywhere, dragon rings are the rarest, because the spawn rate on their chests is a lot lower than all the other chests. To get started on looting these, you'll need a potion of flight, potion of invisibility, a warp scroll, a pickaxe, a luck mag 2 pike for the extra reach, or a bound axe for the extra safety, and potions of fairy transformation if you want the extra risk and reward. Wine can always be used at any point to extend the duration of your potions instead of creating a bunch of new ones, and Ambrosia can be an alternative to Luck Mag 2 since it gives you the Luck 3 buff. Additionally, once you get a Fairy Ring, you can use that instead of the potions of Fairy Transformation. As soon as you're ready, drink all your potions and start flying from building to building, looting any chests accessible from the outside with just a little bit of mining. In general, the higher up you are, the safer you are, the one exception being a few flying mobs that can see you from a further range than normal mobs, like the Flying Carrier, Heavy Bomber, Yellow Eyes, Adapted Yellow Eyes, and the Overseer. All boss enemies can also just straight see you through invisibility, so watch out for those. While you're looting, keep your distance from Infernal Mobs with Storm, as they'll randomly strike you and just kill you right out of the sky. Once your potion effects are about to end, or you're satisfied with your loot, go ahead and just warp scroll out of there and start creating your collection of rings. Keep in mind, this method is also great for scouting out the lost cities and understanding how everything generates, so that when you actually go in with armor, you're a lot more prepared. It's come to my attention that I'm not actually the first one to use this invisibility strat, so credits to Mandicator on coming up with this method. I don't think he liked me that much before, but we've gotten on pretty good terms. Once you've got yourself a dragon ring or whatever other ring you're looking for, you can turn it into a fruit and then eat it to make the transformation permanent. Being a dragon specifically is super useful for just general progression throughout the game, so I would highly recommend doing this as soon as you can. When you're finally ready to take on the lost cities and start farming parts, you can head back in with a huge advantage. I would only recommend heading back in and farming parts once you have these items or better. For baubles, I would recommend Phalus Claws, the Potion Ring of Resistance, a Poison Stone, and a Shield of Honor. All of your baubles should be reforged to Undying and have the Hardy modifier. Unless you're a dragon, then one should be reforged to Arcane. For weapons, I would highly recommend a Dragon Pike and a Dragon Bow. They don't have to be maxed, but they should be doing lots and lots of damage, and especially be able to deal fire damage as fire does 4 times damage to parasites and slows their adaptation. Here's an example of a maxed out weapon, and here's an example of a maxed out bow. Your armor should have unbreaking 3 or higher, mending, and protection 4 or higher with strength and bit 5 on the chest plate. If you use silver armor, make sure you always have access to flight and never go into any enclosed spaces. You pretty much always need the option of flight at any given moment, or you risk getting stuck and dying and breaking all of your armor while you're at it. Caesars and spiders are pretty much the biggest reasons you want to have flight. I would also recommend enabling some sort of armor HUD display so that you can see your durability on your armor, because you should be looking at that more than your health of this setup. Thankfully, if you don't want to install any other mods, Quark actually has a pretty decent armor durability HUD display. The passive cure buff is well worth the low durability, so as long as you know how to be stealthy, you should be fine. Alternatively, you can use golem armor or neptunium armor, but you'll have to be much more mindful of what enemies inflict what debuffs. The mimic exclusive antidote bobble, which limits negative potion effects to tier 2, is super helpful, but not a must considering how rare it is. One of the biggest things you'll want to be looking out for is sentries, which spawn from dispatchers. They shoot lots of projectiles, each of which deal 10% to all of your armor's durability. Many people also recommend having good potion setups and bringing in lots of wine, so especially on your first few attempts in there, I would recommend doing that. With all the new mobs that this new update added, we can't outscale the Lost Cities anymore, so you'll want to be as stealthy as you possibly can. Make sure that your sneak and sneak speed are maxed out before going in. That's pretty much it for all of my Lost Cities tips but if you have tips of your own, feel free to leave them in the comments. 
And special thanks to you guys for all the support in the last video. It's really played a huge part in inspiring me to make more content. As I work on content for the next video, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in future videos, and I'll see what I can do to make it happen. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.